All right, so first thoughts of the lake, it's actually full, which was a surprise to me. Most of you guys know out here in California, our reservoirs uh, get drained pretty quickly. Should be fun, lots of rock, riprap, some island tops. All right, guys, we got the boat on the water. Basically, this lake is divided into two arms. Uh, one's under the bridge, the other one's up north. Uh, one's blowing really hard, the other one looks calm. So it's almost a coin toss. We're gonna start in the calm arm. We're thinking the wind will pick up in the afternoon and this windy arm will have even more wind and maybe we get a reaction bite going. So for now, we're gonna head up the calmer arm of the lake, basically take a drive, see what we see. The last time I was here, 10 plus years ago, it was a murky lake. That was kind of what I had in mind. Today we're looking at 10, 12 feet of visibility probably. It's clear. Um, we're definitely having to rethink, maybe tie up some lighter rigs, uh, but we're gonna take a look and see what we can find. Oh, sorry, buddy. Well, that's uh, not exactly what I had in mind for a first fish, but now we know for sure there's largemouth in here. Uh, we were just discussing what kind of fish are in here. We don't even know. Obviously largemouth, but we don't know if they're smallmouth, if they're spots, we got no idea. Hopefully they get a whole lot bigger than that, uh, but it's a start. Oh lordy, I need a spoon. I got one. Do you? Yeah.
these fish are. Fish are between 25 and 30, over 37. <laughs> you get bit? Yeah. Dude, I got a loop in this line that's like all the way down. Got him? Yeah. Doubled up. 37 feet of water. This might be changing the course of our day. One on a shaky head, other one on a spoon. All right, now we're starting to talk. Come on. So Tim's putting a hammer down with a spoon. So I tied one on, first drop, never even made it to the bottom. Now we got our answer. There's at least large mouth and small mouth in here. That's in there. Not bad. Let it fall in slack line or yeah. semi. It's got to be slack enough to shake. About like that. Enough that I'll know what's going on. Oh, it came off. Oh. I'm using a 702. <laughs> awesome. Can't say that spooning in 40 was really my plan for the day. Don't know about you. I'm thinking we'll try and beat these up for a minute. And then why don't we try and establish like a totally different plan B? Like run grass, run right. pockets for a minute. And then we can try and ping pong the, the patterns down lake. Don't want to get too locked into a pattern. We've obviously got the fish going. But we don't know what size potential is. We know they're in 40. Let's see if they're in two. There we go. Oh, he got me in crap. <laughs> Lost him. 
<laughs> he got me in a tree. Did he? Yeah. I wonder if I should put the heavier spoon on. Do you have it? No, that's the only spoon I brought. Do you have a different rod? Oh, then you're good. Because it's a good rod for it. You oh! Follow follower? Yeah. Oh, look at them. They chased you up big time. They're all at 15 foot metal right now. Of them. They're chasing me down. That went to 20, and now they're fish on bottom, too. Get him. Yeah. So, guys, quick tip for you when you're spooning we're not using particularly heavy line oh but pop off yeah so that's what it's about you see when we're hooking these spoonfish big or small we're grinding them as hard as we can go almost like it's power fishing even though he's using a light rod fluorocarbon uh because the spoon is so heavy you know these are jigging spoons they're not flutter spoons so there's so much lead and it's all in front of the fish's mouth. If you don't really horse them, all that lead, if they get to shake their head, that lead will just pull that treble hook right out. So when you hook up on these spoons, you wanna grind as hard and as fast as you can go and just get them in the boat or you'll lose a lot of them right at the surface, just like Tim did there. As soon as they break water, they get that first head shake and that spoon comes out. So remember when you're spooning, just as hard as you can go once you've got them hooked up, Get them in the boat. That's three bites on the way. Oh, I got wrecked. There we go. Big one. You know we're not really brand loyal. I pulled out some of the baits that I have confidence in and came up with five different <laughs> brands of worms. Uh, but seriously, these are worms that I have a lot of confidence in. So uh, just running through them really quick. Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket. Such a stellar, stellar bait. I like to throw it on a shaky head. Uh, it's a bulkier bait and it's it's thin. Back behind me, there's a bunch of big ponds. You know, Clear Lake, we had a lot of high water this year. And uh, they filled with water, lots of bass back there and bait. Well, now that the water's dropping, it's dropping fairly quick. Um, this is one of the mouths right here. So the fish are pulling out of those ponds. Nice little bass. They're pulling out of these ponds and it's pretty obvious.